I just killed myself. Hey everybody, welcome back uh, to Call Keeper. And the last video, we were... Basically, we unlocked the greater continent, I assume, by killing the Hive Mother. So now, we will... I won't be exploring that fast. I actually want to collect more items and prepare myself first. What? I want to... Yeah, I want to explore more of that in the cave. Like... Fuck, I don't enough iron bars, do I? Okay, never mind then. Explosive project. I didn't know you have a secondary attack. Oh. Oh, oh okay. That seems useful. Anyways, uh, let's just go and dive. Dive? Let's not dive, let's run towards the... that part of the map. Okay, uh, I think while I'm here, I should just be mining for iron. There we go. Actually, yeah, uh, since uh, I mean, like, since I'm talking about like playing a survival game, right? Uh, me and my friend had a very interesting conversation the other day. We were talking about like, cause and shrouded is coming out soon, and we were talking about what our expectation for it. Uh, one of it was we hope that the world isn't. It. Like the world is more alive because the for survival games, I think the immersiveness comes when we see the world interacting with each other. Uh, this like for example, Call Keeper does have it. Like how the cave links will actually interact with the uh lava with the giant lavas and actually kill them. And also, it shows when it shows in the items that they made. Which in of itself is uh makes the world feel more alive. I think the game that best uh represent or made this was actually Ark or the one that I remember. Because Ark was able to Oh fuck off. Oh my god. Well so Ark I was able to make the world feel so much more alive than it is. Because I don't have to be there and somehow the creatures will be interacting with each other and by the time I reach there sometimes the creature won't be uh, alive anymore. And I think that's the key part of making a survival game. Where you don't because you're not playing an adventure you're not playing a story adventure game where the story the entire world revolves around you. You're playing a survival game where uh whenever like, the world will still continue even if you're not there. However, the one thing that I... Oh my god, this guy is fast. The one thing that I... I find the most interesting in the game itself is actually the introduction of a skill tree. Because, uh, we also, we also told our explain to each other that like, how I myself am excited for the skill tree, but how he's worried about it because the skill tree, uh, makes can make the game very easy to cheese or just easy to clear because of how skill trees can be uh skill trees can be grinded, like all the skills you have in the skill tree can be grinded, and I would say it just bring uh, it gives life to the game and there are very not really obvious but very easy ways to ensure that they do not uh. That uh, they do not uh, what's the word, uh, uh, make it overpowered. They can easily like put a restriction like oh in order to pass in order to uh clear like get this item or rather get this skill, uh you have to get this particular item from this uh planet planet uh, from this uh newer area and only then we be able to uh, craft the new like craft the new item that you or no, uh, learn the new skill that you want and also possibly crafting items. I think my main worry for the game is whether or not there is hmm, how do I explain this? I think my main worry about the game is uh whether 
or rather the main thing I want from that game, from Enshrouded or any survival game in general, is that when I kill a certain creature, right, I expect to get something affiliated with that creature. Uh, this might be because I've played Monster Hunter and like more and a keen Monster Hunter to this type of game too much. So, uh, may, may or may not be a little bit biased because of that. Ring of Rock. Oh! I finally have the set! Rock and Stone. Nice! Uh, if you don't know what reference that is, that's a... Uh, I don't, know, I don't know. Uh, that's a deep rock galactic uh, reference. I think another thing I would really want and shout to all out and shout to have is uh. I mean, I saw that you can actually like like it's very sandboxy where uh you can make your house however you like, which I like because. Uh, sometimes when sometimes I just want to live in a hole in the ground, rather than in a large but serious place. I'm just very curious on how the progression in the game will be. Will, will like mining or dungeon delve? I've done jumping. I think there will be dungeons, but will mining help? Because from what I saw, the world it looks. I mean, it's big, but uh, I'm just a bit afraid. Because I did play this game called uh, Frozen Flame and that game... Oh shit. And I wanted to give that game a chance. But even after giving it a chance, right, I found that, well, maybe this game shouldn't deserve a chance. It's so boring. The world is so boring and the fact that when I killed a creature, I only get like one or two items from it is appalling. Uh, there is uh, what the heck is this? More on that later, but let me see what's this. Oh, what's that? Alright. Okay. Control away. Walls. Uh, tin, got too many. Uh, stone moss. No walls. Uh, the the wall. Okay. Ah, that's it. No special. Which one? Which idiot? Oh. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. Fireball. Uh, I would say... I think I'm more in... Uh, because Frozen and Flame had such a boring... Everything actually. Exploration doesn't. The exploration at the start uh, amuses me, but later on it just bores me and became a hassle. So, if you have not played Frozen Plane before, uh, how the game works is uh, you. At the early point of the game, you just explore this one big map. One big island. Well, not really a big island, it's actually kind of small. But once you reach a certain point, uh, you find out that. For some reason, they decided to take in the, the direction where you are living up in the sky and there are multiple islands that you fly around to. And that's just... Oh shit, I think I killed something that I not to do. That's very... How do I say this? It's so boring. And also, it just feels lazy because uh, it shows that the developers didn't really like I uh, didn't really bother with like oh eh, the fact that how to say it, the, the, they didn't really bother with uh or rather they didn't want to like oh uh you know like the transition point from interest point point uh, interest point A and interest point B let's just like totally uh totally remove that from the equation so we don't have to bother with it by making the players fly around and I just killed myself so apparently you can kill yourself explosion. And I think that's just very stupid. How the fuck did I just kill myself? Holy shit. But honestly, uh, 
Yeah, fro yeah, Frozen Flame, I thought I played, I think I played halfway, I killed the second boss, the Titan, I think. And after that, I just stopped playing. It's just so boring to me. The world feels dead. Uh, nothing really happens in the world itself. Uh, the enemies do not interact with each other. In fact, all of them just rush towards you. The... Oh, shit. The fights are... I not clunky to be honest and the like to collect items is a huge hassle like a humongous hassle and that just basically kills the game for me if you're if the fact that I like I the fact that uh, when I collect like how to say uh, I try to remember which part of the game was a hassle. Oh, um, when I have a new tier of uh, weapon and weaponry or uh, material, a new tier of material for weaponry, which is like the bone, yeah, the bone armor or the bone weapons. One bone weapon costs around, uh, if I'm not wrong, like three to four, three to four uh, bone pieces. And the bone pieces, I can't like scavenge or I can't like go to the new area and try to find it. I have to kill enemies to get it, which is fine. However, the new enemies that has it right doesn't make sense. Because the new enemies that has it is just a retexture of a previous enemy in the first area. And when I kill and, and when I kill them right when I kill them, they only drop like one. Like one bone. And I require a few for one equipment. So imagine trying to get a lot more for other equipments. And that's just that 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 it's such a hassle to just collect items in the game. Whereas like games like for example Callkeeper, at least when you collect an item, there's an abundance of it and you know where to find it rather than just like there's a set location of you know where to find it and it makes sense to get it from there instead of like oh uh, you kill a humanoid enemy and they drop uh, ancient bones like, no let me kill something and they drop that particular item instead and that's the point that like makes me annoyed with the game 